shot in 4K ultra-high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. We have a frost advisory in effect this morning for the entire viewing area. I'll show you the temperatures as you're walking out the door. Deputies are investigating a crime in a small neighborhood in Wake County. Coming up, I'll tell you everything we know so far. Yeah, nine seconds. What a morning to be a Kaniac, huh? The incredible comeback everyone is talking about this morning. Nine seconds apart. Two goals, nine seconds apart. Playoff record for the Hurricanes. And as we welcome you in here on our Tuesday morning after that one last night, lots of folks went to bed. Mm -hmm. Down 3-0, three 3-1, three said forget this. They won. I'm Jeff Hogan. Good to have you with us. And I'm Renee Chu. Yeah, scoring five goals. Pandemonium mm. at PNC Arena. Oh, what a game. Our crew chief, Larry, got to go to the game. <laughs> so jealous, but we'll get you caught up on that. But first, let's go to meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner. A look at our frost advisory. It is chilly out there. It is. Temperatures are in the 30s in a lot of places this morning. And the uh, frost advisory does cover the entire viewing area. We take a look at temperatures. It's 32 right now in Roxboro, 36 in South Hill, 39 in Rocky Mount, 37 in Goldsboro and Southern Pines. The only place where we're not in the 30s is uh, in Fayetteville, where it's 41. We have clear skies and clear skies allow our temperatures to fall really quickly. There is no cloud cover to hold in any of the daytime heating that we saw yesterday. So all that warmth escapes into the atmosphere quickly. So the temperatures fall fast and that's what we'll see this morning. We take a live look at Roxborough this morning. All clear. Our temperature in Roxborough is at 32, but in the triangle it's 37 and we have light winds and with light winds we also see those temperatures falling fast. So a chilly start this morning, but this is likely to be the cold this morning that we'll see all week. However, you're probably going to need a jacket or a coat almost every morning this week. Our temperatures this afternoon will be lovely in the low 70s. and We're looking at plenty of sunshine today. I'm tracking a front for tomorrow. I'll show you how much rain it may bring coming up. Thanks, Elizabeth. We have breaking news for following. Deputies are on the scene of an investigation in Wake County right now. This is happening on Royal Acres Road, southeast of Raleigh in Wake County. And that's where Nick Perlin joins us in the WRL Breaking News Tracker. And Nick, uh, very limited information so far on this investigation, right? <laughs> Jeff, that's correct. And actually, just as we were coming on to air, uh, investigators and police are actually now clearing the scene. Uh, we do know that they are investigating a crime. We're not sure at this point what exactly they are investigating. But like I said, they actually are leaving here behind me. I do want to get behind the camera real quick just to show you what they were spending a lot of their time looking at. When I got here at around three this morning, I saw law enforcement uh, focusing in on this home right here. Again, still unclear what exactly they were investigating. As you can see, um, a sheriff's deputy and another one actually leaving the scene, like I just said. Uh, we're still trying to find out more information about what exactly caused them to be here so early this morning. Uh, but once we have that information, we'll be sure to update you. But as of now, the scene is actually clearing out as I'm speaking. So reporting live in uh, Wake County, Nick Pearl and WRL News. Several people were taken into custody last night at New York University as officers responded to protests. It comes after another encampment popped up at NYU in Manhattan. The students were in solidarity with Columbia University students calling for an end to Israel's war with Hamas. How many people were taken into custody is not clear. Video shows police with helmets and batons and warning people to leave. An NYPD commissioner shared the letter sent by the university asking police to clear protesters. At Columbia University, all classes at its main campus will be hybrid for the rest of the semester following protests there. The decision was made after reports of Jewish students feeling threatened on campus. New York police arrested about 100 protesters last week. Carolina Hurricanes posted on social media, no dang quit in this team. What a night after the team's incredible comeback in game two of their series with the New York Islanders. Jarvis, one-timer, score! Backdoor tip in, we're tied! Loose, score! Two goals in nine seconds with just over two minutes to play. That put the Canes ahead four to three after they were behind three nothing earlier in the game. They ended up winning five to three. It is the first time the Canes have come back from a three goal deficit in a playoff game since 2006. The cardiac Canes are back. The fans who were there to see it say they'll never forget it. What just happened? It was wild. Cardiac Canes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that Canes for nothing. <laughs> Wild, unreal. The Canes are now up two games to none in this best of seven series. They'll play game three Thursday night in New York. A new Amazon facility is bringing more than a thousand new jobs to the greater Raleigh community. WRO's Laura Levine joins us now from Smithfield. And Laura, ribbon cutting is happening there today. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Jeff. Yes, this has been years in the making. Now, finally, the doors on this Amazon facility here in Smithfield are open. Behind me, you can see the stage is set for that big event happening later today to officially celebrate its opening. Town officials hoping that this Amazon facility will deliver a nice economic boost to this small town. Now, the new 620,000 square foot warehousing facility is expected to bring more than 1,000 new jobs, as you've mentioned. Today, we're getting a first-hand look at the inbound cross dock in Smithfield as town leaders plan to officially cut the ribbon and celebrate this opening here. At last check, the starting wage for employees is about $15 an hour. Amazon received tax grant incentives for a year, about for a seven-year period, that is. It required the giant retail firm to make a $100 million investment in the plant. Those dollars will make a big impact, as we know, on this small town of Smithfield in Johnston County overall. Now, the a ribbon cutting ceremony will begin at 11:30 a.m. Laura Levine, WRL News. We're live in Johnston County. Good morning. I'm Chris Levin in the WRL Live Center. We're following some breaking news out of Cumberland County, Fayetteville specifically. We've learned that firefighters are on the scene of a fire at a multifamily residence building. It's not quite clear if these are condos or apartments, but we do know again multiple families live within this unit. It looks like they responded around 1:45 to Fountain Grove Circle that they were told that smoke was coming from that building with multiple units inside in terms of people who live there. It's unclear just how severe that fire is, but we are working to get more information from firefighters in that Fayetteville area. Chris, thank you. Today we'll learn more about plans for a new housing community in Raleigh for young people transitioning out of foster care. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live this morning with how this project will help support the community. Kelsey. <laughs> Renee, growing up in foster care without a place to call home is already tough enough, but what happens when these children age out of the system? Well, data shows that most of these kids become homeless adults, and this morning a new program will be announced that could help change that. 25% of children who age out of the foster care system become homeless within four years. This from the National Foster Institute. This program will offer affordable housing to children aging out of foster care. It will be a nine-unit apartment building with an office Office and small community space. The housing is for former foster children who earn less than 30% of the median area income. That's roughly $24,000 a year here in Raleigh. A million dollars in federal funding is already going towards this project and Congresswoman Deborah Ross, the Hope Center, and a nonprofit for homeless called CASA will uh, be making an announcement today and that is scheduled for this morning at 10 o'clock. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Today, Wake County Schools leaders will consider a new policy for using the overdose reversal medication naloxone in schools. The proposal would train one staff member in each school and office building on how to use naloxone. The Safety and Security Committee will talk about a possible timeline for getting that policy started. Wake County Public Schools hasn't had any reported overdoses, but other school systems have. Last year, naloxone was used 21 times for suspected overdoses in North Carolina schools. Today, the first witness in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial will be back on the stand. David Pecker is a former publisher of the National Enquirer. He's accused of helping Trump put together the $130,000 deal to silence Stormy Daniels. He was granted federal immunity in exchange for his testimony. Pecker was on the stand briefly yesterday after opening statements in the trial. The prosecution laid out its case about a criminal conspiracy and cover-up. The defense began with a simple statement. Donald Trump is innocent. Families of people who've died by violence are honoring them during National Crime Victims Rights Week. Dozens gathered in Raleigh Monday for an event geared toward helping those families. That's the theme of this year's Crime Victims Rights Week. How would you help? Raleigh Police Chief Estelle Patterson says if you see a crime taking place, you need to say something. Everybody knows what's happening in your neighborhood, in your community, and I really encourage you not to be afraid to come forward to give us that information because it's going to make a world of difference. The U.S. Attorney's Office joined with Raleigh Police to be part of this event. A South Carolina man is recovering after he was pulled to the bottom of a river by an alligator. 
wrench back as hard as I could, trying to rip my arm off at the elbow. And uh, I got out. I don't know how. How he fought off the gator with a screwdriver. And we give you this live look at North Hills this morning. Cold morning out there. We will warm up nicely by this afternoon. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will join us after the break with that. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists. 443, we have a frost advisory that's in effect right now. We have some cold temperatures out there and uh, uh, guaranteed that there's some farmers out there that are doing everything they can to protect our fabulous strawberries that are out in the field and uh, all the other crops that are really starting to come along because here we are at almost the end of April. We take a live look at Sanford and we're seeing clear skies. You'll see that as the sun comes up here shortly. It is 34 in Lewisburg right now, 37 Southern Pines. Almost everybody's sitting in the mid to upper 30s currently. 35 South Hill, 43 though in Gold. Goldsboro 41 in Fayetteville. So there are a couple of spots down south where uh, we're seeing 40s this morning. So it's a chilly start. We climb up into the mid 60s though at lunchtime and into the low 70s this afternoon with sunshine. Beautiful day to get outside and exercise or anything you want to do. Elizabeth, thanks. A South Carolina man is recovering after escaping the grasp of an alligator that pulled him 50 feet to the bottom of a river. William Georgitis was diving for fossils in the Cooper River near Charleston when the gator latched onto his arm. The alligator pulled him underwater and he was fighting for his life. Georgitis says he fought back with a screwdriver he was using to pry fossils out. I went for his gum line and tried to stab it in between his teeth where the soft spots were. And that seemed to work. He shook me again pretty hard down there. And at that point, I ran out of air. So scary. Georgita says when he was finally able to yank his arm free from the gator's mouth, he was surprised it wasn't torn off. He got to the surface and a passing boater pulled him in. Doctors say he will not lose his arm, but he will need to have multiple surgeries. Wow. A 13-year-old girl is dead after a shooting at a Raleigh apartment complex. Police were on the scene for more than 14 hours Monday. The family of the girl described the death as a homicide, though police are calling it a death investigation right now. Dozens of people gathered outside that apartment complex, many overcome with emotion. I think they're devastated. I think they're confused and hurt overall because these battles just didn't happen yesterday. But no mother wants to hear this. No father, grandfather. Grandmother wants to hear that their child or loved one this young could be a victim of gun violence. Police tell us as of right now, no one is in custody. If you've noticed the water in Raleigh has tasted or smelled off in the past few days, it's because of an increase in algae blooms at Falls Lake. The lake provides roughly 80% of the water for customers in Raleigh. Raleigh water officials say the increase in algae made the water taste a little earthy or musty. They say the water is safe to drink, but the algae can release taste or odor compounds that can make it into your tap water. It's something they weren't prepared for at this point in the year. I think in this particular case, the, the working theory is that it was just a, a relatively warm April. You know, we saw some days, um, basically almost 90 last week. And typically when you have that algae like warm water. And so in fact, um, I was at Falls Lake uh, last week and saw people skiing. The city has added activated carbon and increased oxidizing techniques to help with the taste. They say it could take a couple of days before water is back to normal. The latest Meredith poll shows the presidential race in North Carolina getting tighter. The poll shows Donald Trump and Joe Biden in a statistical tie. The governor's race appears to be opening up a bit. Among registered North Carolina voters, Democrat Josh Stein has 45 percent support. Republican Mark Robinson has 36 percent. 15% say they haven't decided yet. This is a wider lead for Stein than two months ago. Fashion retailer Express has filed for bankruptcy and will close more than 100 stores in the U.S. The company operates about 530 Express Retail and Express Factory outlet stores. The business never completely recovered after slumping early in the pandemic. Express says it's received a buyout offer from WHP Global, which owns brands like Toys R Us and Ann Klein. WHP is already part owner of Express. 
448 we're coming up on right now. Elizabeth Gardner over in the WRN Severe Weather Center. You know it's cold outside, but then when you look at this map, it just gives you a little extra chill, right? It does. <laughs> Temperatures are in the 30s almost everywhere this morning. And so we do have the frost advisory. Uh, of course, you may have some tender vegetation. Hopefully you were able to uh, cover whatever you needed to cover um, last night. But if not, and you're up right now, you might still be able to protect things. But temperatures have already dropped into the mid 30s. Really, in order to see a lot of real damage to plants, temperatures have to be in the upper 20s for two or three hours. So for the most part, we should be okay. It's really the farmers who are out, uh, you know, watching those crops very carefully to make sure that they don't lose anything. It's 32 in Siler City and in Roxboro right now, 34 in Henderson and 34 in Lewisburg. And of course, these are just thermometers that are in a fixed position uh, at a specific site. And there are definitely places where uh, we have low-lying spots. We have rural areas where sometimes the temperatures can drop even farther uh, than that. Uh, cold air is dense and heavy and it settles down into low places. So, um, you know, some of those farmers' fields that are in low spots uh, could be even colder. 39 in Wilson, 38 Goldsboro right now. We'll head down to the south. It's 33 in Sanford, 32 Robbins, 37 in Southern Pines, 39 in Clinton. And the reason that I say, if you've really got something that you're concerned about in your yard, you may want to go ahead and cover it now. Temperatures will likely drop a little bit more between now and 7 o'clock. Here's a live look at Roxboro this morning. A little breezy here. Winds mostly are calm with calm winds. That's another thing that allows our temperatures to drop pretty quickly. We have calm winds at the airport, 37 degrees, and we're going to see temperatures climbing into the mid 60s by lunchtime. And we'll see a lovely afternoon with sunshine and a high in the 70s. This high pressure system builds in and starts to switch our wind to southerly, and that helps to warm things up. We'll see 73 in Raleigh, 73 in Durham, and in Fayetteville with lots of sunshine. You can see our winds are variable right now. This high pressure system, as it slides back to our south, helps to switch our winds to southerly and helps to warm things up. So not nearly as chilly tomorrow morning. 51 for tomorrow morning and for Thursday morning. A little cooler Friday morning and then we're in the 50s again. So this looks like our only frost scare this week. 75 is our normal high. And look at those 70s across the board all the way through Saturday. Checking the pollen count. The numbers are falling. It's low for weeds and grasses, but we're at technically we're at high, but that number is at about 400 down from um, the peak of 5,000. So the pollen is definitely easing up and it is that time of year. We are in late April and so that tree pollen really starts to uh, ramp down now and the grass pollen begins to climb just a little bit. Check out the seven day forecast. We've got some gorgeous weather in our forecast. Now tomorrow we have a small chance of a shower with a cold front coming through. I'm going to walk you through that coming up in just a few minutes. Elizabeth, thanks. Items from two legendary rock bands from England will soon be on the auction block when fans will get the chance to buy memorabilia from the Stones and the Beatles. Plus, an MMA fighter helps wrangle an alligator in Florida. That incredible video coming up next. Cher is among a group of performers receiving music's highest honor. Taylor Swift shares more details about our new album. Ashley Dvorkin has details on those stories and more in The Hollywood Nation. Hi, Peanut. Superheroes tease new Rock Hall inductees revealed and Swift shares details in The Hollywood Nation. Taylor Swift is opening up about her new album, The Tortured Poets Department. Swifties can head to Amazon Music for a track-by-track -track album experience, featuring the global superstar sharing the stories and inspiration behind each song. Inductees for the 2024 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame have been announced. This year's class includes legendary singer Cher, R&B Grammy winner Mary J. Blige, the godfather of metal Ozzy Osbourne, Dave Matthews Band, and Foreigner. The induction ceremony will stream live from Cleveland, Ohio on Disney Plus October 19th. Imagine Dragons announced their sixth album, Loom, will be released June 28th. The Grammy-winning rock band will also celebrate the record release on their North American tour, kicking off July 30th. I'm going out tonight. Warner Brothers released an extended look at The Watchers. The new trailer for the horror thriller starring Dakota Fanning teases deadly creatures watching and stalking four strangers trapped in a house in the Irish woods. The film arrives in theaters June 7th. Look, lady, I'm not interested. 
Disney and Marvel Studios dropped a new trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine, which follows the superheroes jumping through portals and seems to tease a connection to Doctor Strange. It also introduces the crown's Emma Corrin as a new villain and features Hugh Jackman's Wolverine sporting the yellow and blue costume from the X-Men comics. It opens in theaters July 26th. Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, my favorite in there. That was <laughs> Ashley Dvorkin reporting. You know I'll watch it, Jeff. <laughs> I know you will. There's a new option for Wake Tech students completing a bachelor's degree. Fayetteville State is now part of the school's university transfer program. School officials met at Wake Tech Monday to sign the paperwork. So the program guarantees admission to Fayetteville State as long as students graduate from Wake Tech with an associate's degree. Fans of the Beatles and Rolling Stones now have a chance to own legendary pieces of their history. George Harrison's sitar and Keith Richards' custom guitar are both going on the auction block. Harrison played the sitar on the Beatles' song Norwegian Wood. Richards' guitar has original tuners and bears the marks of his musical journey. The auctions get started on Thursday. The three actors who were in the Blair Witch Project 25 years ago are trying to scare up some more money for their work. The actors were paid just a few thousand dollars each for their roles in the cult horror film. It went on to make almost a quarter of a billion dollars. In a public letter posted to social media, they tell the film company behind an upcoming reboot of the film what they want, and that includes retroactive royalties. Another Gator story for you. An MMA fighter was called to one of his other jobs over the weekend, trapping alligators. Mike Dragich is a licensed alligator trapper in Florida. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office notified Florida Fish and Wildlife about a gator on the loose in downtown Jacksonville. Dragic was attending a hockey game just five minutes away, so he was called over. No equipment, no shoes on. He chased the gator and wrangled it. My goodness. <laughs> MMA, Florida, Gator. I mean, I mean he's is, got the expertise. That's how we do it, you know? <laughs> Tensions remain high on college campuses across the nation this morning, including at Cal Poly Humboldt, where pro-Palestinian protesters have occupied a building there. We have new video from overnight. Incredible moments caught on camera after a man's SUV caught fire after a wreck while he was inside. We'll show you the moments people jumped into action to rescue him.